This video will briefly cover the issue of control joints used in hard code stucco. As a home inspector, you should be aware of codes, standards, and industry practices related to the use of control joints in cement stucco. Your job is a tough one, and your evaluation and your report should be fair and honest. The SMA hopes this video will help you understand the use, the need, and the purposes of control joints in stucco. Control joints are one-piece trim accessories used in cement plaster to relieve stresses that impact stucco walls. They are most effective on framed walls that are expansive or large. This is why they are far more common on commercial work than residential work. They are meant to help relieve stresses. We ask you to visit the SMA video on cracks to learn more about stresses in stucco. The SMA was established in 1957 and was deeply involved in the standards for stucco right from the beginning. In 1960, the SMA helped spearhead the first publication on control joints for stucco. The control joint is a one-piece trim accessory that is typically made of metal and can also be made of plastic for the more corrosive environments. Another popular use of control joints is at the corners of doors and windows, as these are known stress points on framed walls. The designer will often place them at the corners and position them horizontally and vertically. Most homes do not have control joints, and this may lead to what we call a reentrant crack. Most are hardly noticeable, and they can hardly be a problem unless they're larger than hairline. Under certain lighting conditions, the crack may be more visible, but still not a significant concern unless it's larger than hairline. In some cases, the designer may use the control joint to establish a pattern or design. As mentioned, most homes do not have control joints, and until the year 2000, there was no mention or need on any residential project. That all changed when the ASTM standards became referenced by the building code. But most building officials agree that there is no requirement for control joints on single-family homes. While ASTM is a guide standard, it is the building official who ultimately makes the final decision on code-related items. We ask you to refer to the SMA video on codes and systems for clarification on code compliance. Some designs also would not look right with control joints and we believe the designer should be allowed flexibility in design options, and the SMA and the code support that decision. Good examples would be English Tudor, or Spanish or Tuscan style architecture. For those wishing to understand ASTM and control joints better, the standard is C1063. The section about control joints is 7.11.4.1, but this can move around as the standard frequently changes. In short, panels created by control joints should be as square as possible and not exceed 144 square feet. The control joints themselves should not be spaced over 18 feet apart, and panels should have a length to width ratio not to exceed 2.5 to 1 should be noted in the ASTM forward, they clearly state this is a voluntary standard and only binding if the city says they are. This means the building department has the final call on what is code. Most building inspectors are pretty relaxed on this issue, as they should be, as this is unrelated to life safety issues. The SMA understands you will likely at some point run across an excessively cracked stucco wall. While it is tempting to simply blame it on a lack of control joints, that is rarely the real cause for the cracking. It is far more likely due to an underlying issue. It would be more helpful to the owner to recommend further investigation by stucco experts. We hope this video helps explain the use of one-piece control joints in some blunt plaster and the where and why and why you may or may not see them. It is becoming more popular to use these control joints on stucco, and that's a good thing. This can help relieve the minor stress, and it gives plasters good start and stop points to minimize jointing. The SMA produces a technical paper on our website that helps provide more detailed information on this issue. Thank you for watching this short video, and we hope you found it helpful. Every project is unique, and you must make your observations and report fairly. 
If the SMA can help you, let us know. We hope you will click like and subscribe as we have new videos coming out every week.